Hello, I'm Eli Jordan, and this was my first mission trip. Um, before this mission trip, I was very nervous about going on it because there were a bunch of unknowns that were going to occur. There was a long plane ride. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be available during the time of the trip, so I needed a lot of strength to be able to go on the trip. And it was, by the end of it, it was very worth it um, to go on it. It was a great experience, and I would totally go on it again next year. Um, there were a lot of experiences that we had along over the course of the trip through siding houses and going to the Dakota Mart. Um, uh, but my favorite one, the one that stood out to me the most, was the um, night we took a trip to the Sweat Lodge. And we saw all of the different um, traditions that they had there. So they had this big fire pit. There were rocks. And they heated up the rocks until they were red hot. And then they'd put them into this little hut that was covered in tarps. And then they pour water on them. And that was how they'd create this steam to make you sweat in the sweat lodge. And I thought that was a really interesting kind of program, if you will, um, watching them and explaining that to all of us. So that was my favorite just experience throughout the trip. And we also saw God a lot throughout the trip. And there's other examples later. But my favorite example of where we saw God was in a McDonald's. Um, <laughs> We were eating dinner, and we had just started to finish up when a lady walked up to us, and she asked us, are you guys on a mission trip? Because we were all wearing our bright orange shirts on our way down there, and evidently, you can see. Um, <laughs> and she asked us, are you on a mission trip? Because she explained she had gone on previous mission trips with her family, and she knew how much it meant to other people to go out and help them, and how much it helped them out, and how much it meant to us when we went out there. So she wanted to thank us, so she gave us $20 and asked us to go buy ice cream as a dessert. Um, and it was just a great experience. And um, for any kids in the audience, I would really uh, encourage you to go ahead and go on the mission trips in the following years when you're old enough to, because it's very worth it, and it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maddie Walker. I'm a junior at BHS, and this was my first mission trip. First, I'd just like to say thank you to Pastor Jen, all the chaperones, and everyone else who helped to make this trip possible. I can honestly say I was blown away by the whole experience. Going into the week, I didn't entirely know what to expect. Some of my friends have participated in it in the past, and they've tried to explain it to me, but it's truly not an easy experience to put into words. I made friends with people who have merely passed in the hallway for the last few years, I met incredibly generous adults in the community, and I became closer with some of my previous friends. In addition to the bonding within the group, I bonded with many natives, especially children, while on the reservation. Each day, I had the opportunity to work at different sites, so I met a lot of different people. It may seem a little obscure to think I could have formed such meaningful bonds with kids I only knew for a day, but they were some of the most outgoing and genuine kids I've ever met. They looked up to us as if, I, as if we were rock stars. This in particular was extremely humbling because as soon as we stepped out of our white van, they'd come running over and beg to play soccer with us with their deflated basketball. They didn't fret over their impaired ball or the fact that we were completely strangers. The only thing that seemed to matter to them was the fact that they had new friends to play with. It was astounding. This interaction alone was one I feel so gracious to have been a part of. Throughout the week, we accomplished many daunting tasks that seemed endless. To name a few, we assembled many three-layer bunk beds, sided a house, and weeded a local playground. Friday morning, a group of about 10 of us were asked to go to the neighborhood playground to weed it and clean it up. When we first arrived, we were overwhelmed with what we saw. Before us was a large playground plotted down in a small field covered in trash and huge weeds. The trash included used diapers, food wrappers, and other arbitrary items. The playground equipment was covered in gruesome graffiti, and lastly, there were large prickly weeds covering every inch of the area. It was at this point where I saw God. Our team, led by Ms. Taylor, didn't hesitate for a minute. We quickly evaluated the work that needed to get done and jumped right into the task. We worked tirelessly to devour the task at hand in a quality and meaningful way. There wasn't a moment where one of us complained of the task or felt dread towards it. In fact, it was the opposite. We all felt empowered to be part of such a simple but meaningful project. Throughout the day, locals from the neighborhood stopped by to say thank you and to talk to us about our work. Also, as the playground became cleaner, an increasing amount of children flowed in. 
As our final day and project came to a close, we felt a sense of accomplishment like no other. To know that we had made even a handful of kids' day happier by giving them a rejuvenated place to play was extremely rewarding. I felt so blessed to be part of a project where everyone had so willingly worked together. Throughout the whole trip, God was visible in many aspects, but that day he was extremely apparent in, apparent in the way we worked so willingly. Hi, my name is Sarah Lyon. Like Maddie, I'm also a junior at BHS, and this is my first time going on a mission trip. I've grown up in Brookfield and gone to this church for as long as I can remember, so I've heard all the stories about the mission trip and dreamed of the time that I would finally get to go myself. The mission trip was the most expected and unexpected journey of my life. Before going, I had heard of all the tragedies that I was going to encounter, of all the hardships that are uncommon here and commonplace there. And as a result, I braced myself for the worst and decided that to be an effective worker, I had to keep a level head, something that I struggle with. <laughs> um, after landing in South Dakota, we drove to a small white building with peeling paint that exuded a feeling of abandonment. A man came out and shook hands with the adults and introduced himself as Jim and explained that this was the visitor center. <laughs> He led us inside, and while I was still skeptical, showed us all the rooms that were meant to be bedrooms, and I could see that Jim's eyes weren't focused on us, but the future. Suddenly, the building didn't seem so shabby anymore. Jim knew what needed to be done, how he wanted to do it, and now he had the people to do it, and I can say it was an honor to be one of those people. Like Maddie, I also worked an array of jobs and encountered an array of people. I met children who only wanted to be held and play with, played with, a man who only wanted a few more dollars so he could buy a few more beers, and people who were still deeply in touch with their heritage and, that's, and still carried on age-old traditions. The one thing that struck me the hardest was the lightness they all retained. Even in, what w even in what we would consider hard times, they kept moving forward and kept enjoying the simple pleasures of their lives. Looking back, I believe that resilience is a gift so rarely found, a gift, if nothing else, that must have been given by God. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maddie Honeyford. And I'm Emma Genevalis, and we're both seniors at Brookfield High School. And this summer, we went on our third mission trip with the Congregational Church. Going into this year's trip, I had a lot of initial notions about what this expedition would be like because we had a team go to South Dakota just a few years ago. Like every mission trip, I was prepared for direct exposure to a culture that was so greatly different from the lives we were leaving in Brookfield. Driving through the shockingly flat and cornfield land into Fort Thompson, the first thing I noticed were the, all the people walking around on their roads. There was a small old church, houses scattered throughout the town, a casino, and of course, the illustrious Dakota Mart. What I thought would be a scrappy, worn collection of houses was actually much more similar to my con concept of a normal town, but so far from perfect. By the end of the week, the stray dogs and walking citizens could recognize our huge cars that usually traveled in numbers. In the words of Jim, the Fort Thompson Habitat for Humanity director, everyone knows you're here. We had several main projects, including fixing the volunteer center so that it was actually able to house people, cleaning the church we stayed at, cleaning the playground, and of course, setting a house for a single dad and his two children. Each time we went back to the house project, the group of kids who lived near the house never failed to make several appearances throughout the day, asking for piggybacks or to have their hair braided. At night, there was usually always some kind of activity planned for us. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that we became so fascinated with their culture. We saw their dances, heard their songs, and spent hours learning about the sweat lodge and other ceremonies that make up not only their history, but every aspect of their spirituality. The most amazing work site to be a part of was the Habitat for Humanity home. It was located at the end of a row of Habitat homes that were each built in exactly the same fashion. Our task for the week was to side the home. It was grueling and sometimes tedious work to measure, cut, and nail row after row of composite siding under the dry heat of the South Dakota sun. What broke the monotony were the children. On the first day of the work site, we met Precious, Aaliyah, Ar Arliss, Eliza, and their brother Tyson. They embraced us and craved our attention, even as we explained what our task was to do. So while the majority of our mission group went to work on the house, a few of us hung back to play tag and give them piggyback rides. 
It was so refreshing to play with such eternally optimistic kids. I was luckier than most of the mission team because I had the opportunity to go back to the work site three more times after my first day. Each day I went, I was welcomed back by the girls and Tyson in a flurry of hugs and jumping and shouting, although Tyson generally did not participate in the hugging. I grew to be especially close with one girl in particular, Aaliyah. I was constantly giving her piggyback rides, laughing with her, French braiding her hair, and just holding her. On Friday, our last work day in South Dakota, I was able to go to the house one more time. The house itself looked wonderful. We were able to complete within our week more than half of siding the house. But I was dreading saying goodbye to the children. As the day came to an end, I said goodbye to each of them in turn. And then it was time to say goodbye to Aaliyah. I gave her a big hug and told her she was a very special person and I would always remember her. She in turn gave me a wad of pictures that her, she and her sister Precious colored and wanted to give me although she wouldn't give them to me until I promised that I would save them forever, which I did happily. Um, uh, I saw her briefly once more after this heart-wrenching goodbye as my group went to pick up the mission group working at the playground. Although we did not speak, and I don't think she noticed my presence, my last memory of Aaliyah was her playing and laughing with her brothers and sisters in the dust and dirt of the South Dakota land. At our congregation, we always say how God is still speaking. With every mission trip I've gone on, this has proven true. We saw God in the simple ways we could make the children happy, us taking the time to have fun with them made their day. On my first day working at the house, without even introducing myself to them, the kids would sprint from their houses and give us the most genuine hugs. We saw God in the willingness of the natives to share with us what was most sacred to them, and we saw God in their dedication and love for family. Family became defined as not just those who share your blood, but those who we share with. Mitakuye Oyasin, the motto of Lakota culture, means all are related. We were just another volunteer group to come and help in Fort, Fort Thompson, but the unbelievable generosity of its citizens made us feel like we could be a part of their family. God was present every inch of the journey, but on the evening that the mission team met the, team met the single father and his children for whom the Habitat House would become home, God was especially alive and at work. He, this kind man thanked all of us collectively and shook every single one of our hands. He was gracious and unashamed, which humbled us all. He reminded us why we came to South Dakota. We came to change lives for the better and give a community a sense of hope for their existence among the poverty and desperation their nation had suffered. God taught us once more that to love our neighbors and to walk always with hope and happiness is the single greatest thing that we can do on the road to making our world a better place. <laughs>